Hello everybody, in this video we're playing with Heaven Engineering Steamworks to create stats and achievements in your Unity project. And as promised in the previous video, we're using Steam's example app ID of 480, which they use for Space War. And that's bizarrely published by Telltale Games. As you can see, they've got some ready-made achievements for us. Down here they've got stats. Now, if you want to have your own achievements and stats, obviously, in the own game that you're making, you won't be using App ID 480. You'll be using your own App ID. So log in to your account on partner.steamgames.com. At this point, you've already made your own App ID, hopefully, and you're ready to go and find your game listed and add your own achievements and stats. Now, in the menus, you've got stats and achievements, and then there you'll click on stats or achievements depending on which one you want to do so we'll do stats first and then we'll go and create a new stat and in our new stat we can set if it's going to be an int or if it's going to be a float we can give our stat a name it has to be a unique name that we're going to call from inside unity to know which stat this is and by default it's set to client where we can change this stat to be updated by a steam game server or an official steam game server and here we can set our default value and the display name that we'll be showing to our players it's as easy as pie. And when we go over to the achievements, we can actually use stats in the achievements. And what do I mean by that? Well, you can see here we've got an achievement called New Achievement. Uh, here's a description, display name for it. Uh, we've got here, if it's set by the client or by the server, we can even set here little icons for it. And if it's hidden or if it's going to be displayed to the, to the players. Now, the progress stat, here we can say if your stat, let's say, enemies killed, hits a certain value, max value here, then it will unlock this achievement for the player automatically so you don't have to worry about it or putting it into your game. It's a very fun, easy way of unlocking achievements by letting players hit a goal and not having to worry about coding it yourself. If you want to learn more about stats and achievements, you can pop over to the Steamworks documentation where they've got a nice overview, even telling you what all of these values what they mean and further down, They've got some help, how to use them, and some more details. If we pop over to the Heaven Engineering's page, you can see in the knowledge base from Heaven Engineering that they've got a guide on the achievements, as well as a guide for the stats, along with leaderboards and everything else that you would have in Steamworks Complete. If I want to play a game on Steam, I need to have Steam, and I need to be signed in. Exactly the same thing if I want to make a game for Steam, I need to have Steam and I need to be signed in. Otherwise, it will have nothing to connect to and nothing to update. I'm currently logged in, so when I click play, you can see my avatar and here's my name. Now, if I click on the left hand side, Heaven Managers, you'll see this script Steamworks Behavior and it's looking for a settings file. If I click that settings file, you'll recognize this achievement of win one game and this stat of feet traveled. It's very easy to add new ones. So we can just click new here and add a new achievement or click for new float or a new int here. If I'm doing a server build, I can go over here to server and I can see all the additional values and parameters here to enter in. And I can also disable mirror support if I want. I'm just going to be playing about with a client build. So I'm not going to look at any of those settings for now. We can look at those in another tutorial. The application ID is looking for is the 480 for Steam's Space War sample. And over here is telling us where the pop-up position is going to be. Top left, top right, bottom left, bottom right. And we, we can set an offset as well. well. Over here it tells you that the Steam Games overlay only works when the game is launched from the Steam client. That includes this pop-up. So you might wonder why your pop-up isn't showing. Well, you need to run it from the Steam client to see them. On the left hand side, we've got some buttons. If I click on the unlock winner, you'll see that the button's looking for the achievement and it's just dragged in this achievement. And on the achievement, it's got two methods here that are saying clear the achievement or unlock the achievement. Now in my case, we're going to write a script that's going to clear all the stats and all the achievements in one go rather than needing to do one for each achievement or each stat. Now the stat itself, you see here it's using a script and this example script has a method to update stats. So if I go to this here, 
you see it's looking for the Steam settings, the stat object, so that's the heat traveled, the achievement here, the value for the text that it will update, and here the achievement text that it will update. If we pop into Unity and have a look at this, it's a very easy little method. All it's doing is taking a value for a float here, and it's saying that it's going to set the float stat, which is the value plus the amount there. So this object is the float stat object here that was defined in the public variables. So that's the feet traveled. Much like how the achievement had methods to set the achievement and clear the achievement, the stat has set float stats and also one for set int stats as well. And we can have set user float or set user int stat. So if you're using an int or a float, it's very easy to update those values. Now don't forget, you need to store the stats and achievement after you've updated it, otherwise those values won't have been sent to Steam. Much like when you're playing a game and it isn't constantly saving your data in real time, you want to be doing a similar thing with Valve. Don't use store stats and achievements every time you're updating the player's stats and achievements, otherwise you'll be spamming Valve and you will be blocked. Instead, create key points in your UI and in your game where you will be sending that data to Valve. And when you're exiting your game, it will always try to sync with Valve anyway to, to send the updated stats and achievements. Because you don't want to have to create new stats and achievements every time you want to test your game or have to go out there and create a new Steam account, we want to be able to reset our stats. Now, I've made a very basic script called reset stats and in here is a method using Steamworks namespace Steam user stats reset all stats from that class. And I've set here true which is for achievements too. So it will reset the achievements as well as all the stats. If I only want to reset the stats and not the achievements, I can set this to false, but I want it to be true. So back inside the Unity, I'm going to add another little button here and we'll add our method onto that button. Here's my little button with reset stats and my method reset all the stats. And when we click play, we'll be able to set our stats and then we'll be able to reset them. Let's pop over here and do add. And we can see now that we've got 5332. And over here, I'll unlock a winner. Now, if I increase my values, you'll see that we've unlocked an achievement when one game has been unlocked. If I come out of play mode and go back in, you'll see that it's got the values from before, 66.65, and it's unlocked. If I click that, nothing else happens, but I can keep incrementing my values. If I come out again, go back in, the value's updated. But if I click reset, bear in mind my script is very simple and it does not update the UI. I come out, and I'll come back in, and those values will be reset. So we're back to zero, and it's locked. I can then unlock and add some values in again. As simple as that. We want to have more fun. We want to do this ourselves on our own scene, not one that we've got from the sample projects. I would advise you, if you're going to do this in your game, use additive loading on scenes so that you're having a bootstrap load a scene and then additively load your menu on top of that and then unload the menu and load in your levels. But for the sake of this tutorial, I'm going to use the cheeky don't destroy and load, which basically makes a it's Unity's own hidden fake scene. You know the ones that you've noticed when you're, when you're playing about with scenes and over here it will magically appear don't destroy and load and below it a load of game objects that have been set to not destroy. So we'll just use that method. So if I go over here to my script folder, I've got here do not destroy on load script that I've made. And here all it's got is that on awake it will say don't destroy this game object. That's all it does. So if we go to a new scene and I'm just going to set it up, put it to a black solid color, remove my audio listener as we won't need it. And here we'll just make an empty object. 
I'm going to call this one scene loader. Now I've got a very simple scene loader that I'm going to be using. Uh, I would suggest that you would use your own. But we're going to use a very simple one here. And it's going to load number one scene. And I'm going to set it to auto start. So that it will load it immediately. And I'm going to make another empty here. And I'm going to call this one Steamworks Manager. Now the Steamworks Manager is my game object that I don't want to destroy. Do not destroy on load this one. And on here we're going to be adding our Steamworks behavior. We need to have ourselves a settings file to be able to use here. In my data folder I'm making create Steamworks settings file. I'm going to call it tutorial settings. I'm going to put app ID 480, leave the pop-up position as it is, and we need to start adding our achievements and stats that we found over on the sample project 480 from the Steam website. And if you remember the one, it's this one here. We'll put the link in the description. These are the stats. Now these are going to be integers because I'm not sure how you can play one and a half games or win in one and a half games or lose one and a half games or have one and a half shots fired but these I'm assuming are floats because it's feet traveled, average speed and, and maximum feet traveled. These are achievements and achievements are just a simple thing of a, having a string of its name that it's looking for. Okay pop back inside to Unity now. Now I can go over and create my first achievement which will be win one game and make an int stat of the number of games which was num games. So I'm just going to pause and I'll add them all in. Here they all are and if I open up the settings you'll see they're here as well. So here are my achievements and here's the name. It's even got an event here that we can say on unlock we can do something which is brilliant. Here are our stats and on the stats we can have a on value changed. We can do something using the event system and here we can have a default value on there as well. And over here has got the user data and we can have events for the user data. If the name has changed or the user, if his avatar's changed, the state's changed, if they've come online, gone offline and all that kind of stuff. So that's brilliant. Now if we go over here to our manager, we want to drag in our tutorial settings over here. Now we've got more events. So we could say when Steam's initialized, we can do something. If there was an error while initializing, we can do something. Or with the overlays activated, we could do something. Here are stats and achievements, more events. And with the game server, more events. So it, you don't need to write any code. You can just use the Unity event system to do a lot of work for you. As I say here, we've got do not destroy and load. We've got our Steamworks behavior script set up. We have our scene loader, which is going to load a scene number one for me, which is a main menu of a sample from the space combat kit that I'm using because I figured, you know what, it's this space war demo from Steam. Let's use a space kit to just do a little demo game for ourselves. And I'm going to save this scene now in my scenes folder. So when I click play, we will see the magic happen. I have my auto loader kicked in, but you'll notice over here, don't destroy and load, Steamworks Manager. And here's my manager, which means that it will never try to get caught again. It's important that this is called once and only once, once your game has started. If you've got multiple scenes and it's added into a scene later on or it comes back to the menu screen, we're going to have problems. So put it right at the start like I did and then have your loader scene load up your menu in your game. So that is it. We've got our settings manager. It's loaded up. It's looking for the settings and we've put in our achievements and stats. The next video we'll be playing about with updating those values in a game.